Legends, G'day Superstars, it's Jay Wall here, or Jay Dog, or whatever you want to call me. I am here today with a very, very special show just for our Friday, because it is finals fever time. Both our teams are in the footy finals, and today, being Friday, the one day after the shameful act of Thursday night qualifying final, we thought we'd bring out a little special 10-minute show for you because Peps didn't do live last night, and today's his opportunity where I get to ask him questions about Melbourne. Peps, how you feeling, mate? You know what, J-Dog? Uh, you know, it's like running 44, 42 kilometres of a marathon in first place, and you literally get to the line and someone pips you. Like, we did everything you could possibly do to win a game. We won every metric except for hitouts. And we lost. And so if, you right. the, if, if you showed the game but didn't show the score, you go, gee, that team in the red and blue are pretty good. The same issues that we've spoken to about for two years have risen again, J-Dog. We can't kick a score. We can't <laughs> kick a score. I right. felt like the D-Day invasion where we were coming across the sky Bombing it into the forward line, and we could not hit a target. Oh, we're going there, are we? We're going oh, we're already going there. there. Oh, All right. Yeah. All right. Let's go. So what we're going to do today is I'm actually going to, Peps, I'm going to, I've got five questions for you that's going to yep. focus on Melbourne's performance. Obviously, we know Collingwood won. We know all that. They played well for they a quarter. They were unbelievable. They were. <laughs> oh, here we go. It was perfection. Here we go. All right, so there's five questions, Peps, yeah. that I want to focus on. You yeah. and I both come from the business coaching world, so I'm going to ask you coaching-like questions to extract the most information with emotion. Peps, I want emotion. You're going to get it. Okay, all right. Questions first question. Emotion. First okay. question. This come from the listeners, so oh, it'll come from me, actually. I want you to focus on the positives, Peps. I want you to tell me what aspects of the D's game style did you feel worked well? Okay. Things that I liked out of the game were this. The first thing I definitely liked was after quarter time, they definitely ramped up. Even the second half, I'll probably even say more, ramped up their pressure around the ball. The thing you've got to give Collingwood uh, kudos for, their first quarter pressure was over 200 pressure points. So they were on, yep. uh, and they just took more advantage of going forward. But from the D's perspective, they really did stay with the game. They probably played the better second half of football, I would say. By far. Uh, definitely around the ball, definitely getting the clearances a lot more and definitely hitting the inside 50s a lot more. So they gave themselves every opportunity to win the game. But I will stress, though, j Dog, the word I used there was opportunity, and they just didn't do it. So their strengths around the ball. Viney was amazing. Uh, Petrarca lifted his game. Oliver lifted his game as well, too. Uh, but Max Gorm was absolutely outstanding in the ruck. Um, Cox did get the early advantage over him in the first half, I would say. But then the second half, he blew. He blew. He blew both Cameron and Cox out of the water. Yeah, and and I think Peps on on our show on Monday night, we spoke about. Oh, you spoke about like the wet weather football, and I was. I think I was surprised to see the lack of Melbourne's midfield when the weather was heavy. Yep. But then as the as the weather obviously cleared up, like the quality of Melbourne's midfield stood up. And as you said, Gorn started clunking, all that sort of stuff. I'll be frank. Collingwood played just unbelievable football. They played finals football. And we know they are a cracking first quarter team. Everybody knows that. And they came out firing. And they took advantage of the opportunities when they had them. We, sh we just didn't. Uh, and at one stage when we were two goals to halfway through the second quarter, it was getting a little bit dicey. But for every time they got one, we just happened to sneak one back in the second half. So it was just a, a lack of being able to finish, and we're going to get to that in a moment, while we weren't able to win the game. Can I just put in a little, uh, a little, uh, little trump up moment for myself here, Peps? Yeah, go for it. Pretty sure I called for Bobby Hill to return. You did. I did. And also Gineman to play, and he was yep. in the last quarter. Can I say something with that? Yes. I have not heard a roar for a single player who had four touches in a game more than when Ginevan <laughs> came on. It All was right. unbelievable. Collingwood supporters, no matter how frustrating you are, you're not one-eyed, you're one teeth, one toothed, but the support that you have for your players is um, awe-inspiring. Yeah. 100 and something thousand members, 106,000 members. Um, All right. 83 pets. 
Anyway, move uh, on. Number two. Number two. Where did the challenges or difficulties uh, appear um, to struggle during the match? So where did Melbourne seem to fall down? Oh, oh. Well, I don't know if you know there's a 666. Melbourne play with a 660, which means that we don't have a forward line. <laughs> they, they were atrocious. Uh, Fritz couldn't go down. Uh, Darcy Moore held him beautifully. Quaynor played on picket, and I didn't realise how big Quaynor is. He is a unit yeah. and a half. He's a wrecking ball. Like, Miley Cyrus could swing on him. Yeah, he's a big man. He's a big boy. Um, so just negated him. Van Royen was just, just outplayed. Um, Smith just couldn't get into it. Tom McDonald was practically useless. And it was just frustrating to see. That's where Melbourne lost the game. The back line held up really, really well. They were caught uh, on the outside quite a quite a number of times. And that's the thing that I really like the way Colling would play their forward line is, is that they don't push up all the way. But when it comes out the back by G, by Jingo, by Crikey, they are fierce. They're fast. Jamie Elliott didn't have a great, great uh, time in front of goal, but he's just... Just got Michael Hibbert on the lead too many times. Bobby Hill, like two, two. It was all downhill for him. Uh, amazing. McStay was was sensational. They had half as many inside fifties as Melbourne, but they were they were sniper like where we went in scattergun approach. Yeah. And I don't know how long we have to keep going on about it. There's two things that Melbourne need to do. They need to get a full like a key forward. Don't worry about going after Harley Reid as their first first attempt or first person. You need to go for Oscar Allen. Go for Someone who's going to command a presence down there. We saw Van Royen wasn't ready and McDonald is is, is past it. That's why I, they lost the game. In their I, I, I did wake up this morning to quite a lot of um people talking that they never want to see T Mac near it near near a side ever again. And that's no disrespect to him, but it's just past him. It's yep. just past him. Yep. Yep. And that's that's where we've lost it. And I think that's where we've lost I won't say that's where we lost it last year. I think injury is going to cost us last year, but this year that forward 50 craft is definitely going to cost us uh, potentially moving forward after next week. Well, I did. I also did notice that um, your midfield was nowhere near it for the first half of the game. Second half, they started to get the cog spinning towards that end of the second quarter, but for the first half, I didn't really see much from Petrarca, output from Petrarca, Viney, or Clayton Oliver. No, look, I think the, the ball wasn't down in Melbourne's forward line I, I don't think it wasn't it wasn't set up the way Petrarca likes it. It wasn't a lot to him. Yeah. A lot lot was deep. Um but he was well held. Like let's be honest, he was well held. I think that the loss of Brayshaw early did throw the mechanics of the midfield out a bit as well, yeah. too. Like he's been probably one of our better players this year. Um, and his delivery into Ford 50 is probably one of the best. So yeah. when you lose that, you're gonna have to shake the magnets a little bit. Bailey Laurie comes in, who probably had to play a role that he didn't. Expect to play, and he's just he just wasn't up to it as well. Too, I just think Collingwood played better across the board. Uh, and Melbourne have a lot of thinking to do. How do they approach next week? Whether it's the Swans or whether it's Carlton, you can't go in the same way again. Yeah. Did uh, did how how did Melbourne change their strategy to respond to the Pies game? As you said, the pressure rating was over two hundred for the first quarter. Yep. Um, their back line was shifting very well. Darcy was getting involved. Uh, Darcy Cameron was getting. Oh, sorry. Darcy Moore was getting involved in absolutely everything in the back line. Yep. Quaynor was holding uh, Cozzy bar the end of the second quarter. How did the Ds respond? What did they do? Uh, I think the contested ball went up. Gorn definitely took over the the control in the midfield as well. Yep. So very he definitely, noticeable. He, he, definitely, he, he, took, oh, he took them all. He took them all to the cleaners. Twenty seven possessions, ten contested, ten inside fifties. He was just he was just enormous. Yeah. Uh, so we started to get a bit of control with that. The back line were were, were brilliant all night. I'm, yeah. I'm not Lever going to deny them. They, they, Malieva and May, uh, McVie was down there. Rivers was a bit spray with his kicks. Yeah. Um, Salem, I'm starting to get a question mark on him, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, the midfield had started. They, 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 funny enough, they actually started to take the game on a little bit more. So there was a lot more run past handball, switching the ball out. Um, Chandler started to make some moves up forward. I thought he added a bit of spice to it. Smith started flying for things. He didn't take them, but he, he did provide an option. So th th I think they just moved the ball a little bit quicker. Um, and also I little think the fitness came into it as well too. So they won more of the contested ball. Yeah, They tend to move the ball on a little bit faster. But they once they get within that 70-meter range within goal, they slow up and it's almost like they're waiting for people to get down there. Do you know what? And I was going to say that. It's just wrong. They get I was going to say that. Collingwood 
Yep. If it wasn't for Collingwood's ability to defend that last kick inside the 50, because you were kicking to the pockets. That, and that we've, been, we've, been doing that for, we've been doing that in the whole Goodwin era, is we yep. go to the pockets. Because the whole point is if it goes to the pockets and it goes out of bounds, you get a stoppage, you can, can retain it again. Yeah. But it's not working. It doesn't yeah. work because it means that your shots are harder from a percentage perspective. Yeah. And to have 60, 66, 65 inside 50s and kick, I think, seven goals for the game, 6, 7, 11, I think it might have been, mm. that's that's far from a, a return that a premiership capable winning team is going to do. And I'm really concerned, and a lot of the Melbourne can, people are concerned, that we are throwing away a potential um, – Two flag, three flag team. Oh, generational list. Yeah, I reckon it's a generational list that is being wasted by the way they're being coached. All right. Well, can you describe a certain question number four? Can you just yeah. describe a certain moment or a play or or something that felt um, had a significant impact on the outcome of the game? There were two. <clears throat> yep. And I can know, and I know exactly what they are. Happened in the third quarter. Mm-hmm. Down the field kick, uh, sorry, free, uh, Fritz gets a, a free kick or a mark. I can't remember which one it was. Um, they took the advantage. And in Langdon, instead of just stopping and letting Fritz having a shot from 35 metres in front, which he will nail yep. nine and a half out of ten times, yep. played on with a dribble kick, kicks a point. Yep, I saw that one. Yep. Right? And there was no need to play on at well, all. The- the actual what I what I didn't understand was I thought they were going to pull it back and then they called play on play on and then he kicked it. No, because he when kept it, running. It so if it had he to had be. stopped, if he had stopped, they would have gone. But because he took the advantage, the player takes the advantage. The umpire doesn't have to call it. And because he took the advantage, too bad. Yeah, the second one, than he should have. The second one, and this is probably the one that just we we no one in the ground could understand. Petrarca's running into an open goal. Uh, scouts like he was he was enormous in that in that third quarter. Like I said. Um, running into an open goal, probably 25 out. And instead of actually having the shot himself, which he could you know, kick any day of the week, he handed it off to Pickett and then Pickett snapped it and, and I think missed everything. Yeah. And it didn't make any sense. It re- you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of the Ben Simmons layup. <laughs> That's what it reminded me of. He was going in. He, he, he should have absolutely snagged it. That would have brought it back to, I think, maybe two goals or a goal and a half. Mm. Ends up being a point, and then it's just a waste of time. So they're, they're two situations which really could have turned the way the game was. Uh, but once again, I've got to give credit to Collingwood. Their pressure inside four, inside their back 50 was uh, immense. And they were doing things that Melbourne were doing in the 2021 season. I, I honestly can't see anybody beating Collingwood. After yeah. watching them last night, if they turn up with the addition of Nick Dacos, no one will beat them. They Can are I share unbeatable. my moment with you, what I thought it yep. was? Yep. It was a Fritch miss. That, that would have been back within seven points, but it, the fact that it sprayed and missed everything. Was it seven points or a goal? I think it actually would have been a goal. I think it would have been a point. It would have brought them in within a point. It would have been very close, and yeah. I reckon, because all that point, at that point, as you said, like you'd had probably 15 to 20 extra forward 50 inches at that point. Um and I reckon that would have been the thing to jump you then into the win. But I just that miss was just such a shock to everyone at the ground. And the cameras just like flew around the ground and just seeing shocked faces of Melbourne supporters. Yep. I've never seen him miss like that. Like yep. seriously, he, he hit the Bay 36 snack bay. There was a guy <laughs> selling records that has a concussion. For the ball hitting him in the side Just of the records got flown in the air. Oh, flying everywhere. There was signet <laughs> signet guides going everywhere, I tell you. <laughs> All right, last question. Yep. Um where does this leave Melbourne? Future finals campaign, where does it leave you guys now? What are you thinking? Um stuffed. Oh I honestly okay. think we're stuffed. I I'm i honestly think we're stuffed. And we could go the double stamp st- Sam Stozer. We could go straight sets two years in a row. And that mental psyche is something hard to get over. If we play Carlton next week, I think they'll rate their chances against Carlton. And I think they'll definitely rate their chances against Sydney, both teams. But they need to get a win because if they don't, that means they've lost their last four finals. Okay. Bonus question. Yep. Who do you not want to play next week? Carlton. Okay. I don't don't want to play Carlton next week. And it's not – because of their players. Because, look, they've got a great midfield. Their back line's humming along nicely. Kurnow and Mackay are going to be a handful. We, we know all about that. Yeah. It's just the 
the Carlton supporters, like you have them at the ground as well. Like that'll just blow your mind having to listen to that. So I think Sydney is a better, I think Sydney are in a better position for, for a team for us to beat. And especially if they get over Carlton this week, that's going to be an absolute ball terror of a game. Maybe I, I, the game I, I actually week, picked them. I don't know if it's going to happen though. And so so I, I, move, I, the, move the game. If you guys, if, if Carlton win, move the game to Marvel. That'll be good. You're an idiot. <laughs> uh, no, I just I just think that with Brayshaw out, and I don't know who to bring in. That's the other thing. So somebody has to come in for Brayshaw. I don't know who you bring in. Jordan's too slow. Yeah. Do they go with a complete? Do they do? Do they try something completely different? Do they go with a, a Moniz Wakefield to play his first game in a final and have him just whipping around in that forward line? Oh. Do do they bring in Woe Woden as well? I, I just think something has to change because we look way too slow. There was times that Melbourne players looked like they were on a treadmill. And once again, I'm giving a lot of the credit to what Collingwood did throughout the game. They, they were sublime. Yeah. All right. So, Peps, that's just going to wrap it up for our show today. A yeah. little 15-minute little video for you all. Join us for our show, our one-hour show on Monday where we can delve into all the games. But this is just a little one there being that it's a, it's a finals fever. Yep. And Peps, because you are the spokesperson of Melbourne, and everyone looks forward to your rants on a. Yeah, I couldn't rant last night. I, I was, I didn't know how I felt. I felt disappointed, but I felt like how do you react? You're still in there. You still got a chance, but yeah, it, it, it's stung. It's stung. Yeah. Um. All right. So, listeners, we will see you both. Or us, both us. We'll see you and viewers and viewers and viewers, and viewers. on Monday eight o'clock eight. Australian Eastern Standard Time. This yeah. side of the Westgate Bridge, that's right. All right. See you then, right. listeners. Have a great weekend and go power. Yes. We should do a recap of your game too, especially if you lose. We should do one on Sunday. We should do one as well too. All right. All right. Take See care, everyone. Bye.